So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Nikon ZFC and I'm going to be basically doing my review. I've been using it now for a couple of weeks and so I've had a lot of time to test it and play around with it and take lots of footage and photos. So I'm just going to be showing you footage, photos, let you hear the audio, go through uh, features and um, yeah, just basically give you my verdict on what I think about the camera. In terms of just general use from this camera, I've really enjoyed using it. The thing that I do miss though is having some kind of grip on the camera. I felt by myself like when I was trying to hold on to the camera, I just felt like it was missing a grip. But I know that there is an accessory that you can get which will kind of put that on there for you. So that's not really a big deal. It's just something that I felt myself missing when I every time I picked the camera up. But overall, it's just, it's got a great build quality. It's a really nice looking camera as well. I love the fact that it has this articulating screen, something that the Nikon Z50 doesn't have, which disappointed me a bit when I used it. And, but overall, it was a really nice camera to use. I really enjoyed using it, especially the top dials. So where you've got your ISO and your shutter, pri uh, shutter priority, shutter speed, not shutter priority, your shutter speed, and um, being able to style those in on top of the camera is really useful, especially when you're taking photos, and um, also the exposure compensation too. In terms of battery life, because I was using this for quite a long time and just being out and about with it pretty much all afternoon or all morning, I felt like the battery lasted maybe about two hours, um, up to about two hours. So that's actually pretty decent, and obviously you can replace the battery, so it's not really a big deal. Um, but two hours is pretty good going, so that's what I, I found I was getting out of the camera. The one thing that I did find disappointing was the fact that it doesn't have stabilisation. So unless you've got a lens which does have stabilisation, then you're going to get really shaky footage. And the only way to get around that is to use a gimbal. So I did use a gimbal on a couple of occasions, but most of the time I was out and I didn't actually have my gimbal with me. So I was trying to do things um, handheld so the footage was quite shaky and the lens that I'm using is this 28 millimeter um, is the Nikon uh, Z28 2.8 so this lens doesn't have um, optical stabilization in it so again the footage is just going to be really shaky when you use it with this lens and because this lens is actually um, it zooms in more so you're going to pick up a lot of the vibrations a lot more so that's something to really be aware of when you're using a lens which doesn't have some stabilization with this camera you will pick up a lot of the vibration i went out and tested this in low light and i was pretty impressed with it it's you know it does a pretty good job and everything that i did most of the footage that i did in general was shot in auto exposure and when I went out and I filmed in low light that was definitely shot in auto exposure and it does a really good job of changing the exposure between something that's really light and something that's really dark so for example I was filming the sky because this because it was sunset and the sky looked really pretty and then I brought it back down to the foreground and then it compensated for the exposure pretty well in that situation so in low light it does pretty well and let me know what you think in the comments if you think it looks decent or if you think there are cameras that are much better in that scenario in terms of camera profiles there are 20 different creative ones but in terms of just having normal um not creative ones then there's flat standard neutral and i think there's another one vivid maybe and there might be another one i can't remember but i haven't quite determined which one I like the most but I did find myself using standard the most just because that's what I left it on um, but I did do a comparison between the different ones so you can see which one you prefer and which one looks better to you. In terms of autofocus, the camera does really well. It's got eye detection autofocus, so I really hope you can hear me because there's a lot of traffic going on behind me. But um, it picks up your eyes when you're 
when it's focusing so it will focus on your eyes so if you leave the frame and you come back in the frame it should pick you up pretty quickly and that's something that this camera did really well I found I found so in terms of autofocus you're not going to have a problem with it and it works really well I'm going to switch over to actually using this camera for talking about the video quality and the audio quality because it only makes sense so that you can actually see it whilst I'm talking so I'm going to do that now. So in terms of video quality I do think this is a really good camera it makes the skin tones look really nice and video quality is just really good even in low light. The only thing that I will say is though, if you're shooting in auto exposure, you might want to use the exposure compensation dial just to dial back the exposure a little bit. Because I do feel like, especially when the sun comes out, it just kind of overexposes the scene a little bit too much. So just dialing in the exposure compensation down a little bit just means that you've got a little bit more control if you want to shoot in auto, but you just don't want to have a blown out scene with the skin and anything in the background that's really light. The audio that you're hearing now is from the Nikon ZFC and I'm using this 28mm because I don't have a 16mm so I'm standing maybe like two or three feet away from the camera so this is what it sounds like. It would potentially sound better if I had a wider angle lens and could get closer to the camera but yeah this is what it sounds like with the 28. I'm going to put my Rode video mic go 2 on so that you can hear the difference in using an external microphone as well. So this is now with the Rode Video Mic Go 2 and um, it's got a furry windshield on it as well because it's quite windy today though there's not really any gusts of wind at the moment. Again standing about two or three feet away so if I was closer then it would sound even better. So overall I really, I do like this camera and if I was looking for a crop sensor and something which was actually quite light as well, it's a really light camera to carry around and something that just looks good then the ZFC would definitely be a choice for me. I love the colours that it produces in skin tones as well. That was something that I forgot to mention. So overall, it is just a really nice camera. I really enjoyed using it. So yeah, check it out if you're um, looking for a vlogging camera. But yeah, hope you found this video useful anyway. And if you did, then do give it a like. I have created a playlist for the ZFC. So there's a few other videos which just gives you some tips and then also just runs through the actual specs of the camera because that's something I didn't talk about in this video and also so that you can see the creative colour, the creative picture profiles as well. I've put a separate video together for that so do check out those videos. But yeah thanks for watching and catch you next time.